So our next spot, now we're going to go into the realm of geology, finding things long dead. Um, we're going to look at the preparation and reassembly of uh, tortoise coracoid and associated bone fragments uh, by Josh Lerner. Yeah, all right. So like you said, preparation and reassembly of tortoise coracoid and associated brain fragments. That's what I did this semester. Um, where are they from? We, uh, we, in 2014, um, the Wayland Geology uh, Department found uh, bones down in the Toastal National Geopark Geological Park region. Um, this region is named this because it's got some geological structures that look like um, toastals. And uh, what we found the bones in mostly were the, uh, were the Brule Formation, the Ro uh, Rockford Ash, and the Shatter Formation. Um, these are part of the White River group of this area, and um, this is where these tor tur turtles are found most of the time. Um, the lithology here is mostly claystone, so it makes it very easy to pull <coughs> the bones out and extract them and move them back to the lab. Um, this kind of looks like what it looks like. Um, the, uh, you can tell the difference between the two layers, the shatterin and the brool, by the way that the slope is. So if you see these little, the, where it's really slope-like versus the sheer drops, that's the, that's the boundary line. So most of what we found was in the brool, and um, so that moves on to what was collected. Uh, collected was we found a lot of bone fragments that were in the surface material, and that just means that it was just the bones that were around the, uh, the place where we found more complete bones. So these could be anything from just the top part of the bone to an entire like um, vertebrae or something, um, along with just rocks and things. You just grab as much as you can from around it and put it in a bag and move back. And uh, the bones that we found that were more complete, we placed in a jacket. Um, this would be a, what would be more complete. So you can find entire shells or you know, just little bits of bone. Um, the bone we found was a coracoid from a Nebraska, uh, Stilemius nebraskensis. Um, we say probably because we aren't completely sure because it's just one bone. Um, the bones that you would need to identify it completely are the head or the shell. And since we didn't have any of those on this, this exact turtle, we aren't actually able to say it's definitively a Stilemius nebraskensis, but it is most common in this region and uh, found over, you know, you find 15 of those for anything else. Um, and the bone was a coracoid. Um, one of the main focuses of this project was to uh, learn different preparation techniques for these bones. Um, one of the big ones is cleaning the fossil. So that just means, you know, remove the uh, clay stone from the, uh, from the bone and uh, clean it up, you know, make it look nice. Um, <laughs> the idea behind this is uh, this next part where you reassemble it, it's very difficult to do that if you uh, have, you know, clay stone mixed in with the edges. So once you clean it up, they fit together like puzzle pieces. And, uh, you know, you can, you can build out an entire um, complete bones versus, you know, just some parts that are missing. And you get both of that. Um, what we use to reassemble them is a bupvar adhesive and consolidant. Uh, bupvar is a mixture of plastic and acetone. And uh, when you put it on, the acetone evaporates out very quickly. And uh, it leaves behind the plastic part. So that's what it ha adheses it. And uh, one of the cool things about this is it's also consolidant, which means that if you find a bone that is more complete but is very broken up in the middle, it, uh, you can put this stuff on the, on the top part and it will hold it all together as you move it back. Uh, we didn't do this on one part, we're on, our, on our main bone, and um, it crumbled apart somewhat, so there's some gaps where the more complete bone is made. Um, the tools we use are you know, your handheld tools, so you have your dental tools, which are just your everyday ones that you find in your dentist office, you know, the ones that they dig around your mouth with. Um, we have pin devices, which is a pin size, uh, like, like a writing pin size uh, vice that can hold either like a scupula or a needle, and that's to clean up, that's to dig away at the uh, main and more compact stuff that isn't just easily just brushed aside. And uh, the other things that we could use are a wooden dowel, and that's like, you know, so you can scratch the top of the bone without damaging the bone itself because the wood is softer than the, than the bone is. Um, the other big equipment that we use is a Conco Micro Blaster, and this is an air abrasive system. So uh, it, can, it sprays uh, like a powder, so it can either be baking soda to like metal, metal blocks, small metal blocks. And uh, that's just for whatever you need to use, whether it's very hard or very soft. 
Um, using the baking soda is essentially the same stuff when you uh, get your teeth cleaned in the dentist. Um, it's almost the exact same system. Um, and we use pressures between 30 psi and 90 psi. And the interesting thing about this air abrasive system is that it, uh, you can interchange, you can move them interchangeably, which means that you can have almost no powder coming out at just an incredible um, pressure, or have just a little bit, of, or most a lot of powder coming out at a low pressure. So you can interchangeably um, change them to suit whatever situation it is. Um, these are some of the tools. Here's the wooden dowel. Um, you got your pin vise. This is just in a uh, one of the many dental tools that I used. Um, and tweezers. Tweezers are used for when you need to pull little bits of rock <coughs> between, between these bones. It's very difficult to get, a, get out with fingers. And uh, so you use these tweezers to uh, move things without damaging the entire um, bone as it's sitting on the rock. Um, this is an inside view of the microblaster. Um, this is one of the pin vices. It's different than the one that we, that we used for uh, excavating it, but it's essentially the same purpose. And this is the uh, the powder hose that um, you can change different <coughs> of the pressure or the uh, nozzle type to show how different you know the, the powder will come out in strings versus a spray. And uh, the bones that we were using here were just for practice, just to see which ones and at what pressure would uh, damage the bone versus you know just make it to where the um, place don't came. Um, this is what the surface material looks like before it's uh, sifted through, and uh, it comes from something kind of like this, just as a you know reference point. Um, in these, you can find little bones in there, but what you do is you pour out in a big in a big tray, and you can uh, select all the bones out from the uh, from the rock. And uh, in our bag, we found were all of these bones. Um, so you get you get your more complete um, entire vertebrae system, uh, things here. Um, we have a little bit of shell, and you have uh, bones that have been cracked up, but uh, they possibly could go together. And this stage, you just put things that kind of look together together, and then you sift, you sort through them later. Um, this is the more complete bone that we found. Um, the reason there's not a picture for it before it was uncovered is because we weren't sure that it was a bone, like a, a long, more complete bone, because all that was popping out was this little bit over here, and all of this was covered. So once we uncovered it and realized it was something important, we uh, Took all the stuff from all the uh, clay stone from around it and put it in a bag and transported it back as well as this. So once you find a bone like this, you have to put it in a jacket. So the first step is to to make the, the jacket smaller. We took off the other the two ends and put them on top here. Um, we put them on top of a wet paper towel to act as a consolidant as well because once it dries up, it will hold that stuff together and uh, also as a padding for uh, so it doesn't damage the bone underneath. So the next step is you have to chisel away around the, uh, the bone that you're going to try to transport and all the stuff that you're trying to transport with it, um, whether it be bone fragments or claystone, and you put it on a pedestal, and then you put, your, uh, put the top part in a jacket. So the first step is to cover it entirely with toilet paper, and then tin foil, and then duct tape. And then once you have it all, you flip it over and you uh, do the same, same um, steps to on the bottom. This is just a, this isn't ours, but this is just one of the many that we found when we were down there. And uh, you can see how it's, you know, duct taped all up and everything like that. Um, once we get back to the lab, we, uh, we open it up and then you have the same, the same bone, same everything as, you, as it was when you found it. Um, the next step in this is to excavate this bone and uh, glue it together. So the first step in this is uh, taking the entire bone out and placing it in the sand tray so you can clean them. So these are just pictures of progression. Um, here we have more uh, more cutaway at the bottom, and then we have it more cutaway at the, at the around it, and then you go deeper and deeper until you get them essentially just falling out because there's nothing holding them in anymore. And once you do that, you take them and put them in a tray. And uh, this is where we started running into the issue of not having a consolidate because you start getting pieces from here that are just falling out, and you don't know what to do with them because they're so small. And uh, as you go, you, you get them all out of the rock and place them in one of these trays, and then you clean them up as best you can with hand tools. All right, and then after you do the hand tool, you move on to the micro blaster and put them together, and that looks something like this. So it's easy to tell that this is much cleaner than something like this. And um, so this is, this is as clean as you can get them. However, it's still not glued together yet. So that's where this part, of the glue comes in, the butte bar. Um, the butte bar, 
you put it on and then you have to hold it for like 30 seconds. So these are um, pictures of how it looks when you put them, put them together. So you put some on there, on the bone, and then you hold them together for say 30 seconds to a minute, and then you put them vertically in a sand tray. That way that your, your shakiness or you know, just the way your hands move, the human error is, is out of the question, and it's just gravity is setting them together. So uh, this stuff takes overnight, so this is a long process to glue them together. And then the next day you glue more together, and the last day you have them all glued together. And uh, this is the region where those little bits fell out. But we, were gonna, we're gonna, we didn't get to do it for this project, but uh, we are going to continue to work on this throughout the next few weeks because it's a very hard process to find how this fit together. Um, so this, the coracoid is this bone right here. That's what we found and reconstructed. And what we thought um, was, was going to go with it was this entire region of the arm. But um, with the help of um, Dr. Kaiser and Sarah Flynn, we realized that it's actually the hind limb, the hind right limb. So uh, we constructed as much as we could with the bones that were, uh, that were there. Um, we had bones that were from this turtle, you know, other turtles, and even things like mammals and uh, you know, elbow joints and things that aren't found in these turtles. So uh, what we found was we were able to build from the top of the tibia down through the tarsals and phalanges to a claw. So it's, it's a pretty good um, representation of what their skeleton kind of looks like. But it's not complete just because there's you know sections missing and how things break. Um, so the results with this um, <coughs> this project was uh, excavation and preparing a coracoid and multiple bone fragments, and uh, the entire reconstruction. We were trying to reconstruct an entire limb up to a shoulder, but since we, it wasn't the right bones, we could only do it to the tibia. <coughs> and uh, we wanted to identify that it was a Stillamese nebraskensis, which again we aren't able to definitively say, but uh, it's a pretty good chance that it is one of these. Um, and then this is also a good addition to the uh, paleo um, collection that we have at Wayland here. And that's going to be used for you know your historical geology classes or your, if we teach any paleontology classes in the future, that's what this is going to be used for, um, you know, showing students how these preparation techniques work. And uh, even using that, at least the, uh, um, using the view part, where when you put the acetone on it, you can take the bone parts apart. So this is used for uh, learning purposes, as well as just in addition to the collection that we have here. <coughs> um, acknowledgements, I'd like to thank David Schmidt. Um, he went with us and had the federal permit that we could take stuff from the uh, coastal park. Um, I would like to thank you know Wayland Baptist for just letting me have spots to uh, do this and giving us the resources to go out and do the thing, grab these bones. Um, Dr. Walsh helped me through the entire process of learning how to do this entire um, project. And Dr. Kazner and Sarah Flynn for helping us realize what bones were what. Questions? <laughs> Um, given that this was my first time doing this, the entire process of learning how to do this 
was the learning part versus the doing part. Mm -hmm. And a, a more experienced person would probably could do something like this in a matter of like maybe two weeks, two or three weeks. But uh, since I was learning how to do it and only had one research hour, then it took you know the entire semester to open it up, sort out the bones, and do all this. Josh, have you been able to go on a trip and actually make one of those shells? Not yet, but um, this summer, in about two or three weeks, um, Dr. Walsh and I and a few other students are going down to the same place, and we're going to go excavate bones. On their last trip out, they found a huge bone bed, and uh, they weren't able to excavate anything from it because it was like the last day, last minute. But now we have idea of where that is, and we're going to be able to excavate and take out a lot of, a lot of material out of there. So I will. Okay. <laughs> Do we have other questions? Oh, also, the research is up here for after if you want to look at it.